How's it guys? So I don't normally do these type of videos, but I just had a, such an awesome race on Thursday that I just wanted to show everybody what level of racing that we actually had here in uh, Lobby 1. And this was the final race of our BMW uh, Touring Car Championship. It really has been a fun championship. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Whoa. So I definitely learned from making that mistake because I knew that if I kept trying to accelerate coming off that curb, especially when I was turning, is that that rear would, would come out. I didn't really have a good start um, purely because a, my qualifying time was bad. I, I kept invalidating my laps coming through that last corner. So I stuck myself um, with a 154 but my practice pace, I was just uh, able to get into a 53.0. I hadn't been able to go into the 52s yet. So having seen my potential time of a 152.2, <laughs> there's no ways I'm getting down to that time. Nevertheless, quite happy with, with that we didn't have any incidents going into any of the, the first couple of corners. And the guys were really giving each other the space, coming off the power where they needed to, weren't making any crazy moves and unfortunately Jake's here, you'll see on the right hand side he has to go into the pits, he got himself a draft through penalty, which was great for me, because I had now moved myself up into 8th, so that was actually where I started from the qualifying, did lose a place, Jacques um, Mal, you can see TTR there in front, he came from nowhere and basically threw himself into sixth place going into turn number one so it was a really great start for him unfortunately I didn't, didn't get it but I did think oh let me just record the race never know what what comes out of it and behind me you've got Hugh he's well and truly in my slipstream but you'll see the guys in front will break a little bit earlier and that's purely because they're still trying to just figure each other out and I close the gap again here on Theo Well, there was Ross, he hit that outside curb um, on the power and he landed up sticking it on the barrier on the left hand side so that completely ruined his race. But for me, I'm saying well, cool, sorry Ross for your misfortune but I'm now up uh, an additional place and so I'm up into 7th place and I can see that this pack um, all the way up into 4th place with Andrew is now is that all our lap times are pretty much similar. Um, with our first lap being a 202 it will only have been after this lap now at the end of lap number two we actually would have been able to start just gauging what sort of times that the guys are doing and whether we'd be able to actually close up the gap the Theo went a little bit wide on the grass and I thought that that might have been able to give me a run but instead he actually got a better run on on Jacques so he now puts himself on the inside and I think now, hold on, but I might actually be able to follow him. So I start so up right in there and see that Jacques actually ran himself a little bit wide. So I wasn't really under pressure there and actually turned out to be quite an easy overtake in the end. So thank you Mel. And then all he did for his trouble was get uh, Hugh right up behind him. So in that space of that one corner, he lost two places and then put himself under pressure. So what I was doing is I was actually braking a little bit early here just to stabilize that car and then once it's flat and pointing straight was I then putting that power on. I was a little bit of a hairy moment and realized it would actually have gone that wide. But this is where I'm now starting to see what the other guys are doing and seeing that both Andrew and Theo are running a little bit wide still saying that we did a 154 well that was very close and that's because I was watching the time to say but hold on we still one and a half seconds off essentially my own race pace so I knew that there was lots of lots of gap and I got a great drive out of the corner there I knew that Theo was still on my outside so I just tightened up the line didn't want to squeeze him off there's no point ruining both of our races let him take that position back 
he did get the faster outside line and now Jacques is trying to stick his nose where it doesn't belong back off Jacques turn in get the power on I can see now that I've got that advantage on Theo I'm not sure whether he touched the wall there but now I've got my front wheels in line with his rears I'm committing to the corner and take that place away from Theo with Andrew we are very good mates off the track we are stable teammates but on the track we do you like to race against each other? So I'm still checking the times. I'm still running a second slower than I should be. Yo, I must say we definitely do abuse these poor cars. They, that limiter kicks in so early. Well, the shift limiter, but you still got so much power all the way through that rev range. So now I'm trying to see where Andrew is um, quicker than me, or whether he runs a bit wide. Where am I getting the advantage, so that I can start looking at an overtaking opportunity? So now I'm starting to feel much better is I'm um, just about on that uh, 153. So now I'm driving at, can't say my true potential, but driving at what I'm, I know I'm capable of doing. And then my eyes absolutely lit up here when I land up doing a 152.9. That was the fastest I've actually done in any of the practice. And almost would have had a great run there but unfortunately Andrew was a little bit slower than me so instead of ra ramming up behind him or trying to go around him thought let's just come off the power we now know that we have some pace we'll look for a, an opportunity elsewhere so you'll see that I, I braked a lot earlier than Andrew and then what actually happens is I'm able to get on that power earlier because he's still waiting for that car to stabilize while I'm back on the power and you can see how I just close that gap on him so that for me was already a, a sign that if I'm able to just get right up behind him going in through that inner loop is that I'd be able to really pressurize him coming out and ran a little bit wide there so that gives me an opportunity to tighten up and then the other thing that I now started to think of is that even though I'm now challenging Andrew is that we'd actually closed up a second um, on Ashley which means that we were actually now catching him now all of a sudden I'm starting to think well could I actually get myself this third place Andrew's a little bit wide but I didn't accelerate because I knew that he would probably um, wait for that car to get the grip and tighten up put myself on the inside but no I'm not going to get it so rather just brake let him go oh, that corner did look great I can see that I actually gained 0.2 on my on my fastest time there so I I definitely knew that I had additional time that I could start making. Yeah, Andrew made a little mistake and I go and I follow. Too much of that inside curb. So instead of trying to accelerate on that curb because all it will do is just lift that rear and then once it, you get the grip it throws you onto the, the barrier on the right hand side. So I just let the car coast over it. But this is now where I, I thought that I might be able to get that chance on Andrew. So you'll see where he breaks versus I break. So I actually breaking at the 400. The car's now stable. And it's exactly that. where Because Andrew had carried a little bit more speed into the corner. When he had to come out of that exit. Well, a little bit wide there. It looks like we did touch. 
Sorry about that, Andrew. But because the Andrew's car was unstable coming back on the power when he had to turn left, is that it pushed him wide and that gave me a much better advantage. Because now the car was stable, could put the power on. So that was definitely a, a great learning from myself, which I able to change into a, an overtaking maneuver. So at this point I'm now thinking, okay, cool, we've got just under nine minutes to go. So probably just over five laps, time to hunt down Ashley. So instead of just uh, waiting, because it really took me a long time to catch up to Ashley, that I just wanted to get the lap times in. But now having battled with, with Andrew there is that oh, it had done two 154s, not ideal. But the, the time was slowly but surely coming down between myself and Ashley. And then I hit that 153.0, thinking, okay, cool. I'm now back on my, my race pace. I just need to keep it here. But still haven't hit that uh, 152 yet um, after having my fastest lap time. And then all of a sudden you can see that that fastest lap time it's just jumping between the red and the green and the red and the green and then i go and bang in my fastest time yet of that Definitely not one full misfortune of other drivers, but you have seen Ashley run wide there. Could not have uh, asked for a better moment. We've got just on about two laps to go. I'm now able to get right up behind him. Definitely committed off the accelerator. It wouldn't have been something that I would have done earlier, but I wanted to get this position in the car unstable so I had to come off the power which again just just disappointed with myself because I wanted to be right up behind him to see whether I could just force another error then early on the brakes 400 down into fourth turn in straight back on that power I was thinking about jumping on the inside there, but I could see that he had already started going to the left hand side. Now if I look back you can almost see the opportunity, if I had gone into the inside I could have tightened up and I might have been able to squeeze myself through on the inside there. show on the inside and again Ashley ran wide but I also knew that if I'd gone to the inside on this corner uh, is with myself and Theo is that the outside line would be ha have been a lot faster anyway so I would have not had that advantage I'd rather have just seen where he was to keep him in my sights and then I completely fumbled that so went down two gears I don't know why I did that suppose it's now just the pressure from my side and that unfortunately is where Ashley runs away and I'm not able to get that, that third place in, in the end. You can see that lap time was a 154 so that's 1.6 1 seconds slower than essentially w where I was more comfortable where I was, let me try that again where I was actually comfortable driving. Four hundred down to fourth gear, turn in, back on that power there. I took a little bit of a, a gamble to try and cut the inside. 
And I'm surprised that I actually didn't get a, a slowdown penalty warning there. Because if I'd known that, I would have been doing that earlier. But there again, you can see that I'm now starting to threaten that fastest lap of my own personal time again. I ran wide, had to come off the power. And again, went down a sec to the second gear. Still don't know what, why I, you do these these sort of things. Nevertheless, this first race was absolutely awesome. I do thank uh, Theo, Andrew, uh, Mal, uh, as well as Ashley for being a part of it. It definitely was one of my favourite races for the season. There's flashing of the lights and I came home in 4th place having started 8th uh, on the grid and then dropped down to ninth. so very happy so I did uh, start get the start of the race and for some reason I hit my my view button but now starting in 6th much better qualifying much better start from me w was really happy with that and just snuck past Ashley that's Ross trying to go on the inside of Jake's and I just tucked up right up against him and just followed Ross through. Now coming into the first corner, put myself in fifth place, having started sixth, very happy now I've got Andrew behind me and Ashley is now behind Andrew so I knew that myself and Ashley would be having a bit of a battle later on in this race but if I've got Andrew behind me with it as a buffer I know that he needs to get past Andrew first before he can start um, getting up to me which was very happy very well big moment there again but don't know why I touched the inside curb I keep telling myself stay away from the inside curb and this was the one thing that I didn't quite understand is that in the last race it kept saying that I could do a um, 152.7 but now all of a sudden my potential is saying a 151.8 for me that did not seem realistic at all see now I'm really pushing to start try and stay up against the this leading pack making silly mistakes jumping on the curbs accelerating where I shouldn't be you kind of hit yourself on the head and say hey oh morning my chase So starting to pull away a little bit from Andrew, he unfortunately has uh, all the Ashley right behind him. And now I'm starting to lose some pace here to these front guys and thinking, no man, this is not ex exactly how I expected to be racing. Because the previous race was a lot more fun. But the thing is in our C is that we did a 204 in the first lap. Now all of a sudden we're sitting on a, t a two minute flat. So that was four seconds quicker off the start. Because now at least uh, the, we don't have drivers around me having to watch their braking markers, see where they're braking. So I'm actually able to get into my rhythm a lot sooner. Then still braking on that 400 marker, turning in, letting the car stable. Now on the power, bit of a power slide. Seeing that my lap time I'm now 7 seconds so it puts me on a 153 so in my mind I'm saying okay fine I'm up to my racing pace already but it looks like I might be able to at my current pace just sneak into that like 152.8 around there. But what I'm noticing now is that uh, both Jakes and Ross are not really pulling away from me where Marius and Shaw they are 
having their own battle there. They starting to pull a gap on the, the three of us, but I'm kind of just holding my own here. And that was something that I learned, just gear down, turn in, and I'd figured that out in the qualifying, where I was actually braking quite a bit there, but now I just came off the power, gear down, turn in, and then all of a sudden a 152.6, so that is 0.2 faster than I actually had been since driving this car and practicing this car. And also close up the gap now in Ross through that first corner and that was the learning that I had in that first race. Figured out how to take it with a little bit more speed. Then I actually gained some time going through what we're calling the bus stop, but it's actually called the inner loop. So both Jakes and Ross definitely just pulling me around the track and watching what they're doing, watching where they where their lines are. How am I able to get myself going faster? They're hitting a best sector time. They had to go down to second gear. I made a little bit of a faux bar of that one. There you can see it didn't break there. It just kept that power on. A little tap off. There, yeah, I didn't break either, just tapping off. So there's back to back 152 sixes. Very happy with that, considering I went 150, 152 8, and then all of a sudden 154. I just starting to lose a little bit of way between myself and Jake's but Ross is still kind of in striking range just one little mistake from him and I would be right back up there but I just needed to well there's Jake's he went off onto the grass there so that's going to let Ross close the gap on him and I'm point three up on my time so I'm also going faster than he would be going so that will allow me to close up that gap as well now big lock up there but it actually uh, only lost 0.2 there with that lockup. But still looking at doing a faster time. And this is exactly what I wanted. I now wanted Ross to be on Jake's. I wanted him to be fighting Jake so that I'm able to close the gap up on him. see Theo and Ashley having an almighty battle with Andrew right behind them. And it's always good to see when you've got drivers so close and you see the positions changing and nobody goes off and you just giving each other the space. I think that was Rudy in the pits there. So now that gap is... Uh, closed up between myself and Jake so he was just on about three seconds so I've taken away a half of that time but just not closing that gift on and Ross just yet well Ross goes a bit wide so that's going to allow me to close the gap up on him And I didn't even see that a 152.2, so again, faster than I had been.
And there the cat is right in striking range. So that going down to second gear, I did try uh, tried a few times, but it didn't seem like it was giving me any benefit or or not at all. So I, I was kind of just depending on what felt right, is that I'd either go down to second or just keep it in third. Because now I'm literally just trying to match whatever Ross is doing. there no man all that hard work and there it starts going then once again it feels like we now need to catch the cat so you can see that I did a 153 there so now back to my normal pace don't know how or why but just those silly mistakes that I started making near the end of the lap so I knew that I had to be in that that 152 range to to even make any attempt to stay and actually overtake Ross but then once I'd overtaken him is to start pulling a gap Then, it's, then I look back to see, okay, well, Ashley's now, he's got away from the battle with Theo and Andrew, so he, he's now going to be getting his head down, so I'm sure he's going to be want to try to close that gap up on myself. Ross runs wide, that's great news, which means that he might have a slowdown penalty. And then he's out of sync. One on your left. You're clear. Take the position. Woohoo! And then Ross puts it on the curb, spins himself around, and uh, that's the end of that. So across the line now, so this will be the last lap. I didn't want to um, just bore you with trying to get the, the lap times in to close Jake's, but he had pulled a gap about 5 seconds and 12 seconds away from the leader. Charles and Morris were like that the entire race. Just so awesome to see you guys being able to just latch on to each other, race clean and just enjoy the racing in its entirety. Ah, thank you, my Cherie, for the coffee. <sighs> mm, so good, coffee in the morning. Nevertheless, the one thing I wanted to say that from this race is what it showed me is that if I just put in that extra hour, so having me taken the qualifying, the race one, is I literally found a whole second by just racing, just being on the track which tells me that when I feel like I, I've actually finished my practicing I actually haven't need to do a, another hour or so and then I'll be able to close that gap because now I was a, a lot more competitive Now coming through the last couple of corners, this was actually one of my favorite seasons that we've done here at Soco. Really awesome racing, um, lots of respect by everybody and all I can say is thanks guys and we'll see you at the next season.
Thanks for watching. So two fourth places struggled um, with my qualifying, but happy with the results.